Hi guys, hi friends. My name is Portia and uh, welcome to my channel Encrypted Memories. Today I will be sharing a story about the complication I had in my pregnancy. Um, it's been a while now, it happened, but I feel like I should just share it out there. You never know who would learn from me. You know, people experience things that they don't share and uh, sometimes someone can learn from that or even just hearing about it. And uh, if someone they know or a relative of theirs gets to experience that they would have an idea of what it's all about. Well, um, my pregnancy started really well like everything was fine from the beginning like morning sickness was not bad like the entire pregnancy maybe i threw up like three times so i would not even say i did have morning sickness but i was the weak type i would spend all day in bed and uh, wouldn't want to wake up like get out of bed was very very hard for me and um, I went for my first OBG visit. Everything was great. And even up to 12 weeks, everything was great. But like around 15 weeks, I started having light pains around my right, the right lower part of my abdomen, the right lower part of my belly and uh, it was just really light and uh, mind you this was when covid was really really bad out there like people were so scared to go out so i'm like let me just take it you know um when you're pregnant there are some things that you experience and some of it is just like the baby growing and things like that but then when my pregnancy was like 19, 20 weeks, the pains got really, really bad. I had to like, had to do like a quick visit to my OBG because it was so bad I couldn't take it. The pain was like a seven out of 10. It was really bad. And uh, this was during a break. There wasn't school, so my daughter, I have a daughter, then she was four. I couldn't leave her alone with the COVID and everything. And my husband was at work. So I had to take her with me to the OBG. Um, they couldn't let us come in where everybody would walk in because they did not want her like too exposed to the virus. They had us come in through the back door. They did an ultrasound, did some scanning, but they didn't see anything. I was in pain, but I don't know what happened. The scan didn't see anything wrong. I came back home and uh, three days later, the pain got so bad. I called them, my OBG, and uh, they told me, my doctor is off for the next two days. I won't be able to have anything. So I would have to wait until she comes back from the two days that she'll be off. When she comes back to the office, she'll prescribe a medication for me. I didn't know that in a situation like that, I was supposed to go to the emergency room. I only knew of urgent care. I didn't know of the emergency room because the emergency room is like the hospital that handles everything. But I didn't know. I was laying on the floor because the pain was so bad. I would alternate eyes and heat. And I was scared, like eyes and heat on that baby. I, I was scared like, what would happen? What would these eyes do? Like, but the pain was so bad, I couldn't take it. I was laying on the floor and hoping 
looking forward to like the two days later when the my my OBG doctor would come back from being off. The day she came back, um my husband went to the office but I couldn't go. Like the pain was so bad. He went there, he picked up the prescription that the medication. The prescription he went to the pharmacy, bought the medication and brought it home. When I took it, I think that medication was so powerful. It was just three tablets. And uh, they told me that if I take all these three tablets and the pain doesn't go away, I should go to the hospital. Um, but luckily, after I took the medication, the pain went away. It was after that appointment that I learned that learned of the existence of the emergency room this is really embarrassing but i'm sharing because someone might learn from it i only knew of urgent care because um when i came to the states um well there wasn't any need for me to go to, go to the hospital i have not been never been sick none of my family members ever had any issues the only thing that i would always take me to the urgent care was my daughter would just wake up one day and start throwing up and throwing up no fever and the only place we've been to was the urgent care we've never been to the hospital i didn't even know of the existence of like like emergency room because when you have to go to the hospital you need to have an appointment with a doctor but then if there's an emergency you can now go to the emergency room which I didn't I only know of urgent care as like the place where you have any urgent emergency you go there. Um, I'm sorry if this video turns out to be really long. I will try to break it into two episodes so that it's not too lengthy. Um, um so when I took the medication, that was when the pregnancy was around 20 weeks, the pain went away. Like I didn't have any pain at all. And I went about my normal business. But then when I go out and I'm walking, I'm like, people will always ask me, are you having twins? Are you having twins? Are you having multiples? And I tell them, no. And I said, no, I'm only 20 weeks pregnant. And people will just nod their head like, this is strange. Like, you know, when someone feels like this is not normal, and I was like, well, I don't know why everyone thinks I'm having multiples when I only have one. Like they, my the size of my belly was really, really big. Um, I will try to add in pictures um, as I go along. I don't have all the pictures, but I'm just adding what I have available. But I kind of felt awkward that everyone was thinking I was having multiples, and uh, well, I thought that. Maybe the baby is just big. I just have a lot of, because I had appetite and I was like, okay, maybe it's because I'm eating a lot. But then when the pregnancy was 24 weeks, that was like 24 weeks, five days. Then the D day came. This day is the most scariest day, like, I have never been so scared for my life. On that day, that was September 3rd. What year was it? 2020. I would never forget that day. It was the scariest day of my life. I woke up that morning. We had our evangelism. I wrote some few letters. And I did laundry. I was that after washing and drying, I was folding, and suddenly I started having sharp pains. Like the pain was coming in increments. It was turn at like a one, the next second went to two, the next second went to three, the next second went to four. It was so like it was increasing at a very high speed. I'm like. This is not normal. I just dropped everything, jumped into the shower, showered. The pain was getting really, really bad. And um, I still didn't know of the emergency room. 
I only know that if you want to go to if you have to go to the hospital, you need to make an appointment. But that was urgent, so I was in so much pain and unfortunately for me, my husband still wasn't home that day. And uh, uh, my daughter then was now five. I couldn't leave her at home because I didn't know what would happen. The pain was just so bad. I didn't know if I was having a miscarriage or what was going with my body. The pain was just on my right lower abdomen, like right there on the right side. It was so bad. I was like doing like personally breathing like just to help control the pain and there was no one to drive me I had to drive myself to the urgent care because if not <laughs> I would die in the house so I managed to drive myself to the urgent care and luckily the urgent care was just like five minutes away and uh, I got there, the pain was like seven, eight, nine, ten. The pain was a ten out of ten. It was so bad. And the urgent care, they don't have so many supplies, they don't have a lot of supplies, they don't have, they cannot do like ultrasound, they cannot really do um, a, a lot. So when they looked at my condition, they told me that. They cannot handle my situation here. Um, they they have to call nine one one to take me to the hospital because they asked me if I could drive myself to the hospital. I'm like, no, there is no way I can drive myself in this condition. The pain was so bad. They called nine one one. Nine one one came. They put me on that bed. The nine one one bed. They strap you, strap you, strap you. I started panicking because I didn't know. What was going to happen? The pain was just so bad and I was so afraid that I was going to lose my baby. And with no other one, they had to, they took my daughter and I uh, to the 911 um, emergency car. They drove to the emergency room. When we got there, the pain was getting like, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It was so, it was going up so fast and the pain was really really bad so when we were, when we were still in the um, um, 911 car i quickly texted my husband because i could not call like the the pain was just really bad i could not even talk like the lady that was with me she was asking about my insurance information my id card i just gave her my wallet i'm like whatever you need just look from there if you need more information then maybe you might have to ask later because right now i cannot really talk and uh, since i was pregnant they couldn't give me any pain medication because with pregnancy the you, it's like a contraindication to so many medications because it can affect the baby some of the medications can even cause birth defects and things like that so they couldn't give me anything the lady was like just hold on tight just hang on tight and when we go to the hospital we'll see what the doctor will say we got there they put took me into the room and i had to wait there for the doctor to come the doctor came requested an ultrasound so my daughter had to wait in that room i can just imagine a five-year-old she has never been in a situation like that before her entire life being in that emergency car went to the hospital they were transferring me from bed to bed because i couldn't walk she was so scared i felt so bad for her i had to leave her there to go to the ultrasound room because they would not let her come in we went there they did the ultrasound and the girl when she was you know like when you're pregnant and they're doing they're putting the thing around your belly she got to a certain spot like where that pain was. She's like, where is that pain? As I pointed, she went there. She said, something is not right. My heart fell into my belly. I was like, is my baby dead? What is happening? She said, no, the baby, she can hear the baby's heartbeat, but something is not right. I was so scared. 
Whew. Each time when I think about that, it like takes me right back there. It just takes me there to that same time. And I started crying because I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, am I going to survive or not? Well, she they brought me back into the room. They still couldn't give me any medication because the doctor needs to use the ultrasound and then do the assessment because if they were to give me like a pain medication, even if it was a medication that is not contraindicated to pregnancy, it will cover up the signs and symptoms and the doctor might not be able to come up with the right diagnosis. So I had to wait there and the pain was getting so bad and I started screaming. After I screamed, I got angry and the only thing I could do was pray. I went down on my knees, like, no, I was on the bed. I couldn't go down on my knees, but I started praying and crying. I'm like, oh my God, Jehovah, you gave me this baby. You gave me this pregnancy and I don't know what is going on. All I can pray and ask for is that you keep us alive. I don't know what the future holds for myself and this baby. But I request you, I plead with you, I beg of you, my God, please let us live. My daughter is only five. How would she go on in life without a mom? Like, this would be a very hard thing for her. Look at my poor mother. Because um, it was just um, two weeks before that day, my mother had a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. And she was still recovering like because um one of the arteries of her heart there was a flat oh uh, yes accumulation of fat around there so blood won't really flow properly that led to the heart attack and uh just i don't know two years before then she, um uh, our dad died in a horrible horrible car accident and we couldn't even see his corpse because it was badly damaged. And one month after my dad was buried, my mother's mom died. And my mom had been through a really rough patch. And just two weeks before the day that I had that incident, my mom had a heart attack and she was just recovering. And I was thinking in my head, oh my God. Just a few years ago, my mom lost her dad, her, her husband and her mom in a time of three months and recently she had a heart attack and now she's going to lose her daughter and her grandchild like what would happen to my mother would she be able to survive would she be able to make it like all kind of things were going through my head i i didn't know what to think i just i was just praying and crying praying and crying like my god jehovah please let us leave my mother just suffered a an attack i don't know what would happen to her i have younger siblings who are still nothing and the only parent they have is my mom and uh, the only support them where they have the most support comes from me and if i'm no more my mom just had an attack what if i die and something happens to my mom what will happen to them what will come of them i'm like my god please let us leave and i was crying and screaming the nurses came in they were like i'm they're really sorry they cannot give me any pain medication i said but why is the doctor taking so long well the doctor was not expecting me so you don't expect the doctor to just show up immediately and finally the doctor came the doctor told me that i have a cyst on that right side the cyst is then the baby was 14 inches the cyst was also 14 inches like the cyst and the baby they were fighting for space there in my belly so that cyst was sitting on my right ovary and what happened was that because the cyst had so much weight it sat on that ovary and that twisted my fallopian tube like my fallopian like you know like the fallopian tube is like a pipe and then you have the ovary here like say this is the fallopian tube this is the ovary here the cyst was sitting on the ovary and now because of the weight it twisted 
the fallopian tube twisted it twisted it twisted it and uh, blood could not go to the ovary so the cells in the ovary died the ovary died and that was what was causing the pain because of the, those, the cells that were not getting oxygen and then the doctor said we have to do a surgery we need to remove this cyst and uh, remove the cut of the ovary because it's dead if they leave it they will continue to cause you pain i was only 24 weeks pregnant i have never heard like i've heard of um, one or two incidents of when when like when they had to do surgery on a pregnant lady they removed the baby and they did a surgery on the spinal cord this had to, like the baby had spinal cord issue uh malformation with the spinal cord they did surgery they removed the baby and they did the surgery on the spinal cord they put the baby back in the belly and switched it and the baby was born like i have only heard of that like twice in my entire life i had before that day heard of like they would do a survey on a, it was so scary it's not something that is common you know um, when you're pregnant most of you like to watch videos and just like things that happen i never imagined that something like that could happen to me but that was me there in the situation The doctor, I pleaded, I'm like, can you please give me like pain medication where I can just go home and manage. And uh, when the baby is like maybe 36 weeks where the baby has matured to a certain level, you can now do the surgery and remove the baby. And at least at that time, the baby will have a better chance of surviving. But the doctor told me that that is not an option because the situation right now they need to remove that cyst except i will sign a form stating that i'm leaving the hospital against medical advice by then my husband had closed from work and uh, he saw my text message he rushed and came to the hospital i was there with him i asked him what do i do he said this is your body this is your life what do you think well i didn't know what would happen i am like because the doctor said the chances are 50 50 with this surgery you might die your baby might die you might leave your baby leaves or your baby might die you leave there was no guarantee that this surgery would return everything back to normal that was the most scariest part so he said, well, I will leave you to it and then you make your decision. They gave us, I don't know, like 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know exactly how much time they gave us, but it wasn't long. And I decided that, oh, go ahead with the surgery because at least take action to prevent it from getting worse. Because what if the ovary that is dead I don't know starts to rot in there and get into the baby like it will be a different case scenario you will be have like an infection internally that would be so horrible so I agreed to do the surgery the board brought in the documents I signed 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 and uh, my daughter started crying because she has been in this hospital for quite a while now and the hospital is never like a, a conducive environment for children. She started crying and they told my husband to take her home and they had to go prepare me for surgery. Okay, so um, I will end the video here. I will continue from how I was prepared for surgery and uh, how it went from there. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure having you on my channel. I will see you next time. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so that 
you get to see when I upload new videos. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.